the subject, the place, the occasion, and the delivery made the moment inspiring and an event auspicious for the race. Dr. John T. Jennifer, writing for the Christian Recorder. I'm Stephen Middleton, coming to you from the Possibility Action Network. Our core values include, I am, I can, and I will. I am Possibility Man. We're coming to you today with our February focus, We See Possibility. Today, we want to share on the subject, Judge Robert Heberton Terrell. But first, a reminder, if you have not gone over to YouTube, I urge you to do so today. Like, share, and um, subscribe. And if you are watching this on Facebook, do the same. Like, share, and also follow. Now back to our share, Judge Robert Heberton Terrell. I gotta tell you, Judge Terrell is one of my favorite individuals in history. I encountered this individual in the mid 1980s while doing research uh, in Cincinnati. Uh, when I came upon him, the late historian, Dr. John Hope Franklin, was giving a lecture at the Cincinnati Historical Society. Dr. Franklin had just completed his book about George Washington Williams, and in that book there was this gorgeous photograph and a little caption about Judge Robert Heberton Terrell. I had not heard about him before that time, and the caption intrigued me, and I began to do research into the life, career, and service of Judge Terrell. What I discovered was this. He was born in 1857 in Orange County, Virginia. Now, just consider the year 1857 in the southern state of Virginia. You may conclude immediately that Judge Terrell must have been born in slavery. And you're right. His parents, Harrison Terrell and his mother, Louisa Ann Terrell, had both been slaves in Virginia for many years. And their son was born into this institution and, of course, spent his early years as an enslaved person until the Civil War ended in 1865. Once the Civil War ended and schools began to open up, his father and his mother decided that they would relocate from Virginia, which was mainly agricultural, to the District of Columbia. And they were just strategic in making this choice. They knew that some better schools would exist in Virginia and their first son would have an opportunity to enroll in the public schools there. His, their son enrolled in public school, and of course his talent that he was, you know, a kid who was interested was apparent from the start. D.C. was a good location for them, not only because schools existed in the district, but in the, in the District of Columbia, there were many members of Congress, many perhaps is an exaggeration, but there were several members of Congress who happened to have been black Americans their son and their later children would be able to see these individuals at least closer than they would have been able to see them before had they stayed in the state of Virginia. There were also people, black people, who had opened up businesses 
in the District of Columbia only a few years after emancipation, young Terrell was able to see uh, these individuals up close. There were educated individuals, teachers, lawyers, and other professionals in the District of Columbia, and therefore this district then, in many ways, became a classroom for Robert Heberton Terrell. He also met some graduates of Harvard University. So this young man began to open up his horizons and wondered, could I go to Harvard after com completing my early education in Washington, D.C., uh, in, the, in the district schools? Upon talking to his, his associates and the associates of his father, they encouraged him to first, as a first step, go to Lawrence Academy in Groton, Massachusetts. And that's what the young man did. Can you imagine a young man, perhaps 18, 19, do not know the exact year he left Washington, D.C., setting out on his own to go to school at Lawrence Academy, a place that he had never been before, a place where he knew no one, a place where he probably was the only person of color attended school. But Lawrence Academy gave him the necessary preparation and he applied for and matriculated at Harvard University uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The young Terrell did exceedingly well. And when it came to graduate in 1884, he was one of about six or seven students who had the honors credential to give a valedictorian address. And this is what Dr. Jennifer noted in his article that was published in the Christian Recorder. The subject, Dr. Jennifer wrote, the place he wrote, the occasion he wrote, and the delivery, the way young Terrell delivered his speech, made the moment inspiring and an event auspicious for the race for black Americans. Young Terrell graduated from Harvard valedictorian. No one would have predicted that in 1857 when he was born into the institution of American slavery. After graduation, Terrell returned home to the District of Columbia and became a teacher in the public schools there. He later landed a job to one of the best public schools in the district, the famed M Street Public School. He was later elevated as principal of that school and began to train young black students to be excellent, to be exceptional, to set their sights on something higher because Terrell could see their possibility. Along the way, Terrell had developed an interest in law and earned two law degrees from Howard University School of Law, the Bachelor's of Law, the first degree in law, and the Master's of Law, the LLM. Terrell also landed a part-time job teaching law at Howard University School of Law. He was an amazing individual, a gifted individual, a polished man, some individuals said of him. And then in 1900, the President Theodore Washington was looking for someone to appoint to the Justice Court in the District of Columbia. Some of his advisors, including Booker T. Washington, pointed him to, to Robert Heberton Terrell. Theodore Roosevelt made the appointment. Judge Terrell became the second individual in our nation's history to become a judge in a justice court. A few years later, Congress created the municipal court in the District of Columbia and Justice of the Peace Terrell was elevated as a municipal judge in the District of Columbia. He eventually became the chief judge in the district. While he was a judge, he also became active 
in the community. He understood, for example, that there were black individuals and others with money and didn't have a good place for them to deposit their money, where tellers treated them with dignity and respect. Terrell saw possibility, and he joined others in establishing Capital Savings Bank, where teachers, artisans, plumbers, and others could deposit their money, could talk with tellers, could speak with a bank, bank manager on a basis that was comfortable uh, for them. Later, he joined Booker T. Washington in establishing a branch of the National Negro Business League in the District of Columbia because he saw a possibility. And then he went on tour throughout the country giving speeches to audiences everywhere, talking about the possibility that he saw. Judge Terrell died in 1925 after serving in either the Justice Court or the Municipal Court for approximately 24 years. He saw possibility. What about you? Again, I say, I encountered him in the mid-1980s, and I was inspired by him. But I was inspired by his accomplishment. Again, I ask, what about you? I'm Stephen Middleton, coming to you from the Possibility Action Network. Our core values include, I am, I can, and I will. I am Possibility Man. Today, we brought another segment of our February focus, We See Possibility. Until next time, good day.